Okay. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, today is Jennifer March, March 30th, uh, 2020. I had a sauna today and I had some uh, a checkup and they did the they're doing the HIV, syphilis, all that test again because they always have to check you even though if they checked you before who knows you might have slept with someone else and got contracted something you know so um i also had the where they put a q-tip in your vagina and they clean it and they go down a little bit i did that one too and <clears throat> my baby didn't pass the sauna so i have to go back at two she said to eat lunch and so that I could go back, which is kind of scary because, I mean, you don't want to hear that your baby didn't pass, but I know my baby's okay because he had a heartbeat of 130. So that is, that is, um, what keeps me optimistic about it. I think it was just, he was just sleepy, but we'll see when I go back at my sono at two. So I will update you guys on how that went and then I'll let you guys know. Hi you guys, welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna do, um, I wanna talk about my appointment that I had yesterday with my OBGYN. Um, as you guys know, I was gonna have an appointment on, why well, did, on March 30th of 2020. So yesterday I went to my appointment. I had a sono and I had the sonogram. I had the test, they had to test for like syphilis, other STDs where they put the little q-tip I always thought that it went into my butt but it actually does not go into your butt it goes into your um it goes to the bottom of your clitoris I guess like they just go all the way down so she I, I told her like I told her something because uh, she's been my doctor since I delivered my second son my first son I delivered with a different doctor and the other doctor was nice too but um I I wanted to switch to a different hospital see what the difference was so um well i had told her that like i <laughs> i spent like not hours but i i was cleaning my butthole you know really good so that because i didn't want there to be like anything on it <laughs> but she just laughed at me and she said that we don't even go in your your butt area we go to the very bottom of your where it ends like your line ends so all this time, I thought they did your butthole and they don't. Okay. So anyways, um, she did that and then they did, uh, they drew my blood and they rechecked for like STDs, like HIV, et cetera, because just in case that you contracted it throughout your pregnancy, I'm currently married, um, but you never know, you know, you could have like a wandering husband or something, but, um. That is not the case for me, but um, on my sonogram, uh, I was already going to finish my uh, appointment with her and she told me that my baby didn't pass the sonogram, so she needed me to redo my sonogram, which um, when I was at the sonogram, uh, of course, my baby's heartbeat was beating. He was at 130, but he was the... Oh, the person that does the sonogram, she was kind of concerned because he wasn't moving. And they had me there for like 40 minutes on the sonogram. And he was not, he was just there still. So um, when I went to my OBGYN and she talked to me about it, um, she wanted me to come back after I had lunch and see what would happen if my baby was moving. Um, so when I went to the sonogram, and because they're doing the whole corona virus, everything, you know, I can't take my kids. So my mom had to watch my kids during the regular appointment. So then I had to tell her that I had to go back at two, which she already has a job. So that was pretty difficult. So, but then anyways, my, my brother ended up watching my kids. She, my brother lives with my mom. So she called him and asked him to watch my kids. Okay, so my brother ended up watching my kids, and 
I was kind of nervous of him watching my kids because he doesn't watch my little one. He's he's watched my seven year old, but never my baby. So I was pretty nervous about that, but everything was fine with him. So I get to my sauna and then they tell you, you go upstairs and they check your feet. They check your forehead to make sure you don't have fever. You answer some questions. And then I go to the, um, where I have my sonogram and she tells me they're not ready for me yet. So I had to go downstairs. You can either go downstairs or you can go to your car, but I went ahead and stayed downstairs cause my, I parked kind of far. So I went downstairs. I waited until they called me like around 2.30, 2.40. So I go up and then this time when they did the sauna, um, my baby was again, he was not wanting to move. Um, that's because on the first time actually, and I didn't, I didn't mention that. The first time they brought out like a buzzard. I have never seen that. They buzz your baby and your buzzy, the baby will react to the noise. And my baby did react to the noise of first sonogram, but he didn't like, it didn't bother him. Like you could just tell that he moved, but he didn't bother him. They did it twice. So this time, um, when she did it this time, he, he actually, she did that, the buzzing. And then she kept like tapping my belly. And then he, he, he like punched her. It was so funny because I wish that they let you record. I don't know how other YouTubers or influencers are able to record in the sonograms, but always when I go to a sonogram, it says no cameras, no cameras, no recording or etc. So, but um, my baby punched her and he was active then and everything was okay. And I asked the sonogram, the ultrasonist or the sonogram lady, I asked her what would happen if my baby didn't move, like if he was still the same, um, acting the same as in the first sonogram. And she said that, and she said that they'll probably keep me and monitor my baby because, um, that would probably mean that he was stressed and, um, they would keep me there and monitor the baby's movement and decide from there, most likely I would have to be delivered, etc. But um luckily my baby ended up moving and i didn't have to stay because i wasn't ready yet i still needed to come home and sterilize bottles which i will show a clip of that um how you sterilize their bottles the easiest way that i think for me to sterilize my bottles um at first i would boil them in a pot but now since like over the years i've used those pots i don't feel like it's still it's safe because like I make hot sauce and stuff like I don't want like a little bit of the taste of the the chili if I didn't wash it right or etc so um I have a different method now to sterilize my bottles which is very convenient it's very inexpensive um it's a little container that you buy and you put it in the microwave with your bottles and you fill it up with water and you put it in there um it tells you instructions how to do it um so i'll show you like the clip of me sterilizing all the bottles that i have for the newborn i am i just finished washing dishes i am sterilizing my bottles and um this is the last one i already sterilized the tops so what i do is i use the event one and i've had this one since my first baby so um so what you do is you put water inside on the bottom. It tells you how much to put in. Um, you just put the things in here and let them cool down a little bit. And now I'm gonna take them down and put them where I have the other bottles. And I already sterilized the bottles. I just needed to sterilize the caps, the caps. But yeah. Um, so that was my briefing of my sonogram that I had yesterday. I did want to talk about it because it was kind of scary. I do have a little clip of when, um, in between, like when, um, they made me come, when my doctor told me that my baby didn't pass, pass the test. Um, hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. Um, today is... 
Twitter very much. March 30th, uh, 2020. I had a sauna today and I had some uh, a checkup. And they did the, they're doing the HIV, syphilis, all that test again. Because they always have to check you even though if they checked you before. Who knows? You might have slept with someone else and got contracted something, you know? So, um, I also had the, where they put a Q-tip in your vagina and they clean it and they go down a little bit. I did that one too. And <clears throat> my baby didn't pass the sauna, so I have to go back at two. She said to eat lunch and so that I could go back. Which is kind of scary because, I mean, you don't want to hear that your baby didn't pass. But I know my baby's okay because he had a heartbeat of 130. So, that is that is um, what keeps me optimistic about it. I think it was just, he was just sleepy. But we'll see when I go back at my sono at 2. So, I will update you guys on how that went. And then I'll let you guys know. But now that I think about it. Uh, so I didn't get emotional then because like I knew my baby was okay like the heartbeat everything to me that's a good sign like 130 um, rates per minute was pretty to me was good 130 so I knew that he was still alive so it didn't hit me but like when I think about it now like what if he was like slowly passing away or something like that it does scare me so that's a little scary. So I wanted to talk about that um, on here. But um, let me go ahead and go move on to my diaper bag. Um, this is my hospital bag because this is not going to be my diaper bag. This is way too big for me to have for a baby. Even though I technically have two, will have two babies. One will be two years old and the other one will be... Um, newborn but this is going to be my hospital bag and i'll probably use it for other things too like traveling etc but uh here it is it is a vera brady i bought it at dillard's and huh. dillard's was having like a sale so it was 84 dollars and plus an extra 50 percent. it was that time where they're doing like in the january special but yes, um, it was an extra 50%. So I caught, I bought it for like $40, which to me, that's a really good deal. So, um, that is what it, this is, this bad boy. <laughs> and I wanted to, um, also show you my real diaper bag, which I will be using for both kids, which is big enough for both kids and not too overwhelming, like to carry in the car ever, everywhere, you know, this will be mostly like if I have to leave my son, ever overnight with my parents or something like that or traveling you know like i said <laughs> traveling <laughs> okay so um this is what's in my hospital bag oh, on uh, another thing that i do want to mention um my first two kids i didn't get to plan a diaper bag because my first son he was born at 37 weeks and six days and my water broke with that one so I didn't have a diaper bag ready I was about to start getting my diaper bag ready but um, he was born early so I didn't have that ready and then my second son um, he was born which I yawn I guess I don't have enough oxygen <laughs> okay uh, he was born at 37 uh, 37 weeks on the dot so at 36 weeks and six days six days I was um, going to a regular doctor visit and they told me my blood pressure was a little higher and she checked my legs and they were swollen and um, that's because like in that pregnancy I only gained 11 pounds and I had and I lost all the weight from the pregnancy and some more and now that I'm pregnant this time I've gained um, I'm already chunky like I already got chunky from my kids but I got I gained more weight like a, I think like 20 24 25 which isn't a lot compared to my first pregnancy because my first pregnancy I 
I started off weighing 115 and I gained to like 164 something like that and then my second pregnancy uh, I don't want to talk about those because I did lose the weight from my first pregnancy 164 I went down to 130 something but um, I got the next pull on that uh, birth control that you put in your arm and that one gave me headaches I couldn't run like it gave me a lot of headaches and and I would retain a lot of water so after I think that one was for five years or three years but I ended up taking it out at two years so I took it out let's see my baby was born in 2013 I took it out somewhere like in 2015 like towards the end and I just saw the weight coming down like instantly like Maybe in a month or two, like I had lost most of the weight from the from the first pregnancy. Not from the first, because I had lost technically all the weight. But do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, I had gained weight because of the birth control. Like I had lost the weight from the baby. I mean, I still needed a couple like 15 pounds more because I think I went down from 164 to 130, and then um, I needed to go back to 115, which was pretty hard to do when you have a baby um but once i started working they removed the next pull on and i started working um i gained weight there too because you know lunchtime you start eating um bad food things like that so i did gain weight while i was at work but then i lost weight doing fasting and then i got pregnant and then I gained weight. And then I, no, no, I didn't fast then yet. I started exercising. And then I got pregnant. And then I had the baby. I had Matthew. And then I lost weight because I was fasting. Where I would not eat for three or four or five days straight, just water. And that worked for me. Like, that really worked for me. My blood pressure was going good. Um, you could... Uh, research it water fasting is really good for you it's better than keto i think but um so this is going to be my diaper bag no 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 my hospital bag <laughs> okay so i'm i'm excited because like i said i didn't have a hospital bag for neither of the pregnancies so what i'm gonna take is slippers because i always had to use the hospital's uh, socks which have the little grip holders at the bottom but I went ahead and got me some slippers okay this is so cute because it's for my baby I'm gonna dress them up as Mickey Mouse so here's the little booties the little head um, piece and then the little um, where you put the diaper it might be very big to be honest now that I think about it, it might be big so if it doesn't fit them I'm going to have to do something different. I'm probably going to use one of the outfits that he's going to have. So that's for him. And then another thing. I did. I, I kind of I want him to wear this one too. Just in case the other one doesn't fit. Look at the little Winnie the Pooh. So this is a little headpiece. And then the, the onesie. No, not onesie. Like a sleeper. Okay. So that will probably be one of the photos if the little thing doesn't work. I hope I don't stay there for more than three days. Usually it's two. It's It depends. Like um, Usually if you have a C-section, which I haven't had yet, um, hopefully it'll just be... Once you deliver, you have the baby. You can leave within 24 hours. Just as long as the, the baby passes um, the test. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to take big ass bra because I have big ass boobies. <laughs> and then I know they give you diapers, but just in case, right? I'm just taking one. Just in case, I'm just going to take one. And then I bought a different bra because I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to want to bra with the wire or want a bra like with the wireless so um that's why i'm bringing two 
and then of course you know once you have your baby like i'm gonna wear like these shorts right here they're like um elastic -y so that you don't put that much so you can put some pressure on your belly uh i don't know if i put the faja in here but i am gonna wear one <clears throat> little shoes for the baby <clears throat> some underwear <laughs> and then um after i have the baby i'm excited because uh, the first time i had to reuse the clothes that i went in with because my husband he doesn't know to look for clothes for me i believe i had to reuse the same clothes and then the second time i had to reuse the same clothes as well like it was my work clothes i had to leave in my work clothes shoes and everything so this time i able to pack my own clothes so i'm just gonna wear like pajamas you know and these aren't new or anything i don't feel like i need to buy new clothes to come home from the hospital so just in case uh, a, di a different shirt and then um some what are these called what are they called? Leggings? No, 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 no. Workout clothes? Yeah, I'm going to wear these. <laughs> and then um, some more clothes for my baby. Because I don't know how we're going to be there. If we're going to be there for a day, two, three. Okay, so this one is cute. This one I got it from Target. <clears throat> and then... Uh, changing mat for the baby you know when you change the diaper um, you usually they don't they don't bring anything to change them in so you usually end up changing your baby on the on the mattress of the bed so I'm gonna put this on there <clears throat> I do have little hats for him to wear and then little socks too because sometimes baby feeds like this one say zero to three zero zero to three months but these don't normally sometimes these don't fit the baby like they'll end up coming off so i have these just in case which will have the longer elasticity uh, so you can have a longer ankle part i do not like polyester i like cotton so um these are going to be my blankets. These are from my favorite store, Jimbery. And so these were actually my son's Matthew's blankets, but he actually never used them because Jimbery was closing, so I didn't want to use Jimbery clothes. But now they're reopening, so I get to bring out these blankets, which are these, these Swaddle ones, these soft cotton. Cotton's the best for your baby because cotton um lets the air circulate through so like i said i like cotton blankets i don't like those polyester blankets i like the polyester blankets like for decoration but i don't not use them for my baby to sleep or anything now that my son's older they can use polyester blankets because they'll take it off when they're hot but babies don't know you know i don't want to overheat babies babies can overheat so easily so I am taking cotton blankets. <sighs> this one is from my son Matthew. This is the car seat cover. I I wanted it in cotton, but she doesn't use cotton to make them, so I had to just deal with it. But um, so this is where it goes on the handle of the car seat, right? And then the elephant. I had gotten um, my son Matthew's name on this one, but I ended up taking it off since it's going to be now for the next baby. But um, here it is. And I got it on Ace Day. <clears throat> so um, I am bringing just a little bit of wipes just in case. <clears throat> and then in this little pocket thing, a chupon. Because I don't know what uh, size the baby's going to like. A uh, neat uh, a fact about my previous two babies. They don't like pacifiers. So we're going to see if this third one will like a pacifier. If he doesn't, that's 100% fine with me. 
I've never had a baby where it was uncontrollable, like the the crying or etc. So we got pacifiers, another pacifier, little brush to brush their hair, and the nail trim. Some cream just in case I breastfeed. Uh, my first two, my first son, I did try to breastfeed. Um, I was just breastfeeding for like two months and my son Mason started, um, not bleeding. He started urinating like orange and it was like a crystal orange. So then I talked to the doctor and he told me that my son was dehydrated and that was showing signs that um, it was affecting his kidneys. So once I heard that, I stopped breastfeeding. I wasn't producing enough milk for him. He even though he was eating and he was falling asleep, I was thinking he was full, but he was just probably tired of trying to work so hard for the for the milk. So my second son, I did produce milk for him, and but he just didn't like it because the first <clears throat> the first day at the hospital, I ended up having to stay there two days or three days after I had the baby because my blood pressure was going high so they had to put magnesium magnesium into my veins and I had to stay there for the full 24 hours after on that and then they checked him so my baby had the formula um, the first three or four days of his life even though I did I was able to pump that first night and I did give him the colostrum but um, after that I couldn't give him my breast milk because um, the magnesium was mixed in there with it. And then later on when I did try to give him breast milk, he didn't really want it. Socks. And then um, my two favorite brands of bottles. Bottles. So I like the Avent. The natural. I like the other one, the colic one too. I like these. And then I like the man bottles and I already sterilized these and cleaned them of course but you just really need to sterilize them and that's pretty much it I mean I have hand sanitizers <laughs> single ones I, I didn't use them yet I'm saving them for this moment okay well that's it I don't have anything else in here <clears throat> but that, I think that's pretty much it. So that's going to be for my hospital bag. And I'll put everything back in there. I do want to show you my diaper bag. This will be my diaper bag, my Burberry bag. I've had this bag since 2000 something. <laughs> but I never wore it. And I think now is going to be the time to wear it. Okay. Okay. It's so pretty, right? <clears throat> I do have other bags, but um, I would be so scared to use a different bag. <laughs> but um, so yeah, that's gonna be my hospital bag. Um, let me know if you guys like this video. Of course, subscribe. Um, oh, one last thing too. Uh, my doctor did. Uh, give me a date for just in case I don't go into labor before then. I will be induced on April 19th will be the day that I go to the hospital at 5. And then, of course, I don't think they start you till the next day. But what they normally do is they'll put like some cream or some balloon inside you to expand your cervix or something like that. E phase. We start using all these terms. I have to remember that. Hmm. Okay, so yes, my um my induction date is April 19th, but most likely I will be index induced on April 20th. And maybe the baby will be April 20th or April 21. Hopefully I don't have to have a C-section. Um my second birth was actually really, really simple. 
um, everything ran smoothly. I just pushed like three or four times and the baby was out compared to my uh, first pregnancy. But um, if, you have, if you guys have any questions, um, leave them down below. I am going to be doing a question uh, Q&A and a and i have I'm going to be printing out those questions and I'm going to be answering them. I want to I want to I put on my Facebook to answer me some ask me some questions too and then um I know someone left me a comment for questions that I have to answer as well. So, um if you guys have any questions that you want to answer me before I make that video, um leave them down below. Before I leave, actually, I need to um, show you guys my belly bump. Right. So I am 35 weeks and two days. Two days? Something like that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I do like to wear black because it's slimming. But um, here is my belly bump. Well, let me lower this. Okay, what is this? It's just paper. Paper, paper. But, um, yes, this is my belly bump. Look at her skin underneath there. <laughs> but, yes. Everything is so, so, so painful. Everything is so, so painful. <laughs> but, yes, this is my belly bump. Um, 35 weeks. It is big, 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 big. Thanks for watching. Bye.